22nd in the year of 1972 at Newport, Pennsylvania, a devastating flood occurred in the normally calm waters of the Junietta and Susquehanna rivers, creating massive destruction of property. When you think of floods, you commonly think of a lot of rain or melting snow, not a huge hurricane like Agnes, which came right up the coast of the United States, coming into land just as it was reaching the mid-Atlantic region. Newport, in fact, was hit twice as Agnes swerved around to head back out into the Atlantic Ocean. It wouldn't have been so bad had the hurricane just come a little later. Gracetown Dam was under construction and was almost done at the time. Would you have survived the extreme flooding of the Juniata and its tributaries? Probably. Though there were 20 deaths in central Pennsylvania, none of them were in Perry County. You would have, however, lost some of your belongings if you lived within the floodplain, which reached beyond 3rd Street to the St. Paul's Lutheran Church on Market Street. Farmers in the area suffered the greatest loss since the season's crops were largely destroyed and as much as two feet of topsoil was washed away. What you are about to see is the largest collection of visual and auditory data ever of this traumatic event in the Newport area. The base station knew that there was going to be high water, but the main concentration was on the Susquehanna River. They sort of forgot us here in the Juniata, and I kept inquiring about the Juniata, and they told us we were going to get new, uh, water in Newport, but they didn't, they didn't have a crest for us. We set the lowest on Market Street there on this side of 4th Street, between 3rd and 4th. My home sets the lowest and we had several inches on the first floor. At that particular time, I had hardwood floors, and it had ruined them all but the one front room and living room floor. Well, it was a real mess. Uh, it had ruined my corn, as I said before, and it also took about six inches of topsoil and uh, left a lot of gullies in the fields, and uh, so we had a lot of loss in that way. That, we are just now really recovering from it. Mr. Ampler at the time was uh, working here in the school. I contacted him and he said that we would have, he would make the school available for uh, personnel that had to be moved out of their homes. We set up a mass, what they call a mass care area, and he would take care of feeding the people. The IGA, if I recall, uh, they donated some food to us. They were also they were also on the flood. It caught them. And uh, one of the things that happened to us during the flood is we lost our water supply. And uh, we found out that we had the water uh, was coming from the reservoir over on the Buffalo Mountain, and the pipeline comes across under the river and something had broke our pipeline, so we lost our water in town. The Army Engi Corps of Engineers came in to help us with our water. I found out that there was a filtration uh, system down in New Cumberland, and it was a portable system that the Army has. So Albert Baker furnished a truck, and we went down and brought the portable system up and set it down at the Little Buffalo Stream and pumped the water out of the stream and was uh, treating it and put it into the line, to the uh, borough lines. And we couldn't, we couldn't push the water up to 5th Street and 6th Street, and we couldn't figure out why until after the waters receded. We were, we were treating the water, putting it in lines, and it was going over and going out, out the hole that, in the line in the river. Reverend Harry Cole faded water uh, way up past his waist to shut off the power in the basement, which when we sit back and we think of it, it was a very, very dangerous thing to do. But being the person that he is and the helpful soul that he is, he never gave it a thought himself. And he did that very heroic thing, I felt. We monitored the water, and when it entered Front Street, they started to evacuate the, the uh, people. It was a very difficult task because everyone was pretty, uh, they were pretty, con everyone's concerned about their properties, 
and uh, we had to start on Front Street and then work as the water came up. Uh, there were plenty of volunteers. I can't say enough for the fire company and their volunteers. We had just gotten to sleep when the fire alarm whistle blowed. Here there was a fire downtown at the Newport Hotel. Somebody had a fire going on in that room down there. And the fire department had to go down and try to put this fire out during this what? And the second street, <clears throat> it was so deep that they were coming in and going out by boats. And of course the waves from the boats broke some of the windows at the drugstore and different places that downtown had large store window front glass in. We'd received a call from uh, County Dispatch and we got the word that there was a stainless steel tank of nitrogen liquid nitrogen we got to a call and I remember a couple of guards with me and we were trying to figure out what to do because we knew there wasn't we figured there wasn't room enough for it to pass through underneath the bridge and all we could think is that thing a couple thousand gallon hitting the bridge and exploding what probably half Newport we go and a couple other guys stood out in the bridge and watched this thing pass underneath the bridge working on it but later after it passed through I got another radio dispatch that, that Instead of liquid nitro, it was liquid nitrogen fertilizer. I think my own family was about last to get out. I took them out on a boat. Uh, I waded into the house at Hip Hoops and got my wife off the stairs. She was on the stair steps and took her out. But I think she was one of the last ones to get out. We came up, we were coming up 2nd Street. I had a little boat, had a motor on it. And I made the corner at Mulberry Street to turn up Mulberry Street, and as I, did, as I did, the water caught the boat. The back end seemed to go down. I seen the front end of the boat go up, and my wife going over my head, and I looked back over. <laughs> and our boat, it didn't sink, but it threw us out. And we were in water, caught up to our neck. And I yelled, hold on to the boat. We managed to get over to uh, a porch, and then some people came by and another boat and took us out. way of farming considerably. 
uh, right along the stream where the where the uh, water came out, we built a dike, and uh, that protects these particular fields from uh, from floods that we've had since then. We had some people checking houses for structural damage. Fortunately, we didn't have the structural damage. Damage was very little. We lost uh, we lost no homes. We had some debris that came into town. Uh, the homes had uh, small amounts of mud inside that we had to hose out. And the difficult problem, what well, thing that made it difficult, is we didn't have the water to hose the houses out because of the broken line. So, uh, and then we had uh, we had a lot of volunteers. They pitched in. People had front end loaders that they brought in to throw the junk on and trash and. Uh, we had pickup or dump trucks people brought volunteered to bring in and hold the trash out. At a time of a flood like that, uh, in the neighborhood I live in, uh, you have a situation where you have neighbors helping other neighbors out, and uh, something like that seems to bring a community together, uh, you know, as friends and helping each other out. Uh, the Red Cross came in after the waters had gone down and they asked us about setting up a mass care center and I said our mass care center we've, we've, we've had it set up and all the people went home we don't need one now and they they were amazed that a small town took care of their own <laughs>